Hey, good morning. It's Pastor Joe here. Uh, really should be releasing this on Tuesday, but it is Wednesday instead of Tuesday. And a little later on today, I'll send out the Wednesday word. But just to take just a few minutes of your time, uh, Monday I was coming back from a, a hunting trip out at my brother's place and uh, thinking about what I wanted to share with you today. And I think what's really upon my heart is for us to remember that this Christmas, you know, as we talk about the value and the meaning of Christmas, at the core of all that is Christmas is the is an understanding it's about forgiveness, that God sent his son to deliver us from sin, to forgive us of our sins, to make us new creatures. If there's anything I want you to remember about this Christmas is that high cost of that price that, that was sent to us, the, the price that was spent on us to send to us this gift of forgiveness. It was the life of his son, Jesus. Forgiveness, what a blessing to know that our sins are forgiven and that we're released from the debt of those sins and we're forgiven. But I would, I would add this to that today to, to remind you also that as you have received this gift so freely, it was mercy and grace, that you also would extend this gift to someone else. There's somebody perhaps that you have not had a forgiving heart towards. Scripture makes it clear that we should forgive others as we have been forgiven. You know, the story of the king who forgave the man of his great debt, and then he went out and wouldn't forgive somebody else, and then he was turned over to the torturers, and then he was thrown into prison. That's a, it's a story that Jesus shared about the high price of unforgiveness. Well, we have been forgiven. Praise God. I've been forgiven. But now it's incumbent upon each of us to share that forgiveness. There's somebody that's offended you. There's somebody that's hurt you. Could be a boss, could be an employer, could be somebody at your own church. There's a friction. It could be your own spouse or family member. Uh, you want to give them the best Christmas gift ever and give them the gift of forgiveness. Not only will you release them, you're going to release yourself from that torment. I mean, usually the only person who's mad in the spirit of unforgiveness is the unforgiver. And we get angry. Uh, one man told me in a relationship with his wife, he said, there's a real chill in there. So why don't you, why don't you warm the air up by just expressing spirit of forgiveness? Well, what Christmas is all about is at the heart of, of us forgiving others who've offended us as we have been forgiven. It puts us in a place where we just really have to rely on the Lord, doesn't it? Uh, we, we, we need our, his help. We need his mercy because anger stirs up in us. We, be, we can easily become embittered. The Bible says to lay aside all bitterness and all malice and all evil speaking. So it brings us to a place where I, I've got to trust the Lord. My natural instinct is to, to do those things. So I should come now to a place to let go of those things and say, hey, I'm going to trust the Lord for his mercy and his grace. And I'm going to fully rely upon him, him in this situation by forgiving that other person. It also brings about restored usefulness in my life. As long as I'm embittered, I'm just not really useful. I'm not expressing the, the grace of God nor the mercy of God. But I want to encourage you to realize today that as you forgive others, it brings you back to restoring you to that place where God is really using you in your life. You're, you're out of that prison of debt in your own life. You're, that spirit of unforgiveness that holds you in captivity, those chains are broken. But it also brings about a relief, you know, in your spirit from torment. So we talked about how that man was turned over to the tormentors. The memories of, of the offense always stir up bitterness. The memories of the, spence, the, of, of the offense kind of stir up the uh, uh, anger and anxiety in our, in our heart and our life. When I release that, I'm not, no longer a prisoner to those feelings anymore. I'm going to turn those things over to the Spirit of God and ask God to fill me with grace and to fill me with mercy and to fill me with joy. But it also brings about, most importantly, restored fellowship with my Heavenly Father, with the Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. Because... If I am expressing the very spirit of Christ, which is forgiveness of others, that's when I'm most useful, that's when I'm most restored, and that's when I'm personally most joyful. It's a hard gift to gift because we somehow think that somebody deserves our anger, deserves our cold shoulder, deserves our, our lack of attention or whatever it might be. But boy, what, what a priceless gift when you lay it out before the Lord and you choose to forgive the person who's offended you. You're experiencing, you're expressing, you're living out what Jesus died for in our lives. So as you have been forgiven, the Bible says we should be freely to forgive, free to forgive others. So you want to get the best Christmas ever? Forgive those offenders. I love you. I'm trusting the Lord that he's working in each and every one of your lives. And if there is an offense of some, some level, the Holy Spirit will make that known to you. Liberate your life, liberate yourself, liberate them. Find freedom in Christ Jesus today. It is worth the price of laying down our anger. It's just worth it. Uh, I want to remind you, Sunday services, 
we're continuing our facts, fiction, and fake news series on Christmas. I'll be in both pulpits at Magnolia in spring, but also want to remind you about the Christmas Eve service, 530 at Magnolia, 7 o'clock at spring. Don't miss it. It's going to be a glorious time. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you at church. Bye.